Nice, nice. <laughs> All right, guys, I know you clicked on the video for some good tips, but I wanted to show off my slot snook. I caught it last night, kept him on ice overnight. I'm getting ready to get him clean, but there'll be a great video coming up. Catch, clean, and cook for some snook. I have not had snook in four years. I am really excited. Anyway, let's get on with the rest of this video. First thing I want to share with you is there are some awesome fish catches in this video that you haven't seen yet that support what I'm getting ready to share with you. So make sure you watch the whole video. It's going to be pretty entertaining outside of the tutorial part. All right, here's the tutorial, guys. Look, we've got a, a big rounded area right here, right? A big point just coming around, coming around, coming around, coming around. It comes way around over here. All right, so here's what you'll find in public places, counties and cities. What they'll do, you often see this. You'll see big rocks right along the seawall, okay? It's for extra protection for the seawall. But one of the three things that I say on this channel, and I'm not the guy that thought this up. I'm sure I heard it from some other captains and other people. But the three most important things that we need for inshore saltwater fishing are, one, you got to have bait. So you find the bait, you're going to find the fish. Number two is you got to have structure, right? You got to have some protective areas. And number three, you got to have current. Generally, most saltwater fish will feed when the current is moving, whether it's moving slow or fast, and they're generally feeding when the current is moving. So I want to give you a scenario, okay? Right now, and actually this is the way it is right now. Right now the tide is coming in, okay? So the tide is just like shooting across that way. So if we come over here around this curve, and I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it because I didn't put a polarized lens on here, but there is a huge pod of bait over here. Right around the corner, there's like 300 of them. Yep. So, so you got, so let me do this. So you got your current coming this way, right? Comes this way, but as it comes around the corner, what happens with the current is it creates that corner and those rocks create irregularities in the current. It creates an eddy area. It creates like a little whirlpool area here. There's the bait right there. I don't think you can see them because of the glare. I got polarized lenses on. A huge uh, school of bait fish right here. About 300 of them. Just big school of greenbacks down there. So the mistake that beginner fishermen make, intermediate fishermen make, and expert fishermen do. Sometimes we forget that this is an awesome place to fish right here, right? I mean, we'll just come up here, put our bait on, our lure or whatever, hook it on, we'll just hurl it out there and uh, before we actually fish the seawall. I think the, the number one thing that we should do when we come to a, up to a spot is fish all along the seawall first so that we don't spook those fish away when we're casting and talking and doing whatever it is that we're doing all right so so here's what you've got jack crevals um they will come in here and they try and pin their bait up against the seawall the other day i was uh the other day the other day that video that i made right on the right on the corner i was standing there i was casting out on a flat like that i was working my lures i literally looked down and there was 30 or more jacks huge school of big jacks and they were cruising right along the edge of the seawall just like that just cruising right along the edge of the seawall and they're looking for that bait i'm talking about they're looking for that pile of bait that's over there and when they find them they'll try and pin that bait up against the seawall same way with snook you guys the snook will actually they'll hang out in the deeper water or sometimes they'll hang out depending on how much rocks are on they'll hang out and uh yeah th what they do is they get in those there's potholes right because you've got the current coming in and out current in and out in and out in and out and all that whirlpool stuff happening in eddy areas and different places and it creates irregularities on the bottom and you get these potholes and stuff those snook and grouper and mangrove snapper they like to hang out in those potholes and they'll wait for that bait to come to them so <laughs> yeah always make sure that you fish the edge of the seawall first before you fish anywhere else so uh, that's basically it guys yeah that that's my tutorial so like i said i got clips here i'm going to put in that will support a dude big fish right on the edge of the seawall and the reason they're there is because there's uh, in that spot there's just 
thousands of greenback shiners piled up right in that spot and it's right in that area eddy area where that that whirlpool and that swirl gets created and that's where those big fish are hanging out so let's roll these clips do now just I'm not having much luck here guys oh there we go there we go there we go that sounded like a snook oh that might be my slot snook right there that's my slot snook guys oh he was right on the corner he was right on the corner oh that's a good one that's a good one that might be my keeper snook he's gonna be close he kind of I got a good look at him. He kind of looks like he's about 26, but finally got a hit. He was right there. We got a fighter. That's a nice snook. That's a nice snook. I don't think he's 28. It is so hard to catch a slot snook. Eh. I'm gonna get out the tape measure. I just don't think he's gonna make it. He really looks like he's about 25, 26 inches. Let's see if we can get the tape out. He seems like he's hooked pretty good. Yeah, he's he's not going to make 28. I know better. I know a slot snook when I see one. That's a nice fish, though. That's a really good one, guys. It's one of the bigger snook that I've caught in a while. It's hooked really good, too. That's a heavy snook. And uh, Yozuri getting the job done again. Son of a gun, dude. Look at that. 27 incher. <laughs> All right, one inch short. Shot for the camera. Nice little snook snook. All right, little fella. Go free. And be strong. And there he goes. Nice. Dog got him, man. One inch short. Are you kidding me? I haven't ate snook in four years. Whew. That was a good fight, though. All right, well, let's see if we can get another one. There he is, there he is, there he is. There we go, big fish. Oh, it's a grouper. It's a freaking grouper, man, big grouper. I wonder if I hooked a grouper. Dude, that's a giant, giant grouper. This might be a keeper, guys. Might be a nice little bonus for JC this morning. Oh my God. Are you kidding? He's hooked good too. Oh, look at the size of that grouper. 
Look at the size of that grouper. Holy smokes. We might have us a keeper grouper. Oh my God. <laughs> I wonder if that was a big grouper that I hooked. Dude, that is a nice gag. That is a nice gag. He is gonna be so close. Dude, he has to be 24. Oh my God. So close, so close, so close. Come on, baby. Make the cut. Make the length. Come on. Eh, I'm gonna call it 21, guys. Nice. Yeah, man. Or is that a giant mangrove? That's a cag. Yeah. <laughs> nice. All right, buddy. Giant mangrove, you'll be able to eat it. Heck yeah. Nice. Bunch of bait down here. This, this corner is loaded with greenbacks. Bunch of them. There he is. Oh, good fish, good fish, good fish. Good. Oh, he broke me off. He broke me off. Doggone it. Oh, he broke me off. He broke me off. Doggone it. Corner is loaded with greenbacks. Bunch of them. There he is. Oh, good fish, good fish, good fish, good. Oh, he broke me off. He broke me off. Doggone it. Doggone it. Oh, man, that was a giant. That was a giant. Now that's when I wish I had 80 pound test. Whew. He was ripping like a jack, though. Could have been a big snook. Oh, my God. Two seconds. Two seconds. I had to lock down on him. He hit it, and he was shooting straight in between the pilings. Dog, damn it! Ugh. But man, you're just there, there's a thousand greenbacks right here. He just dog on it. The line snapped because I had to lock down on him. He was going right for the pilings. Whew. That was either a giant jack or a monster, monster, monster snook. Man, he took off. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. That's the second big fish on that corner. After the sun comes up, I'm usually fishing over there on the flat. But after the sun comes up, this corner, man, right here. Dude, that thing is just loaded with bait. That is the second big fish I've hooked right there. Oh my God, that makes me sick. That makes me sick. 80 pound test may have made the difference on that one. I don't know, God, that was a huge fish. That was a huge fish. Hey, hey, I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Set your notifications to all so that you get notified when I upload videos. I upload them all the time. Thumbs up, appreciate it. And everybody, get out there and go fishing, man. Life is fun. Live it. See ya. Subscribe or I'll send this guy out to your next fishing adventure.